that would have been a problem. But it looks yeah. like right now we're going to be perfectly fine. Um, I don't think I'm... I can get in the source TV. I think it is stuck at sending client info because it's paused. That's my guess. I'm in here. Yeah, no, it took uh... a long time to get in, but okay, can definitely right. make it in there. And I don't know what's going on here. It looks like HRG is basically captured middle, despite not having Banny. Maybe uh, they unpaused and everything sort of played out. It looks like the pause is coming off now. Yeah, so hopefully, okay. Truck Trucker, you can get in here as well. Yep, yeah. because we're live on the stream. So, uh, sorry for the wait, guys, but we're back now live in the second map. Granary is the choice for AG. Uh, looks like the score still 0 0, so you haven't missed too much. Shade goes down to Kapow, and looks like HRG have control of middle there. Now get out, 5 on 4. Pops his quick, and AG are able to take it back. Once again, Danny goes down on that right side, and this is what we saw. Same exact thing happened on Badlands on that first map. Uh, AG, the first map, then took it back with a quick fix. Yeah, I'm a little confused. I don't think the quick fix had to be popped off there with Indust, but you can see it on the board, ladies and gentlemen. He's already on 35% with Shade spawns. That thing builds so unbelievably fast. You can't afford to use it here and there if the enemy medic is, is died already. I'm gonna try and press on towards the second point. AG in an advantageous scenario. Soldier comes in from the back. Tiger on 20 HP still left onto Indust. He's gonna have to find his way towards AMAP back. As soon as he does, he's gonna be perfectly fine. Quick fix, almost ready to rock and roll here. And a six versus five plus quick fix advantageous scenario. Boys from AG are gonna try and block off and get the second point done. Yeah, they gotta watch out for this trap and Banny, but the trap oh it does pick up random. <laughs> Uh, meanwhile, AG get that captured down, quick fix is popped, and Shade is going to have a better quick fix coming back in. Lansky's leading the way, he's coming back to take down Sweater. Now they're just pushing across, trying to find some more frag. Trying to get some capture point time. And looks like HRG do take it back there, so now 6 on 5, HRG going to continue moving this advantage in towards right yard. They do see Rando. Or Boink, sorry, I caught out here, and Lansky pulls up the shoddy to take him down. Squitter comes in to help his teammate, takes out Lansky before going down himself, and HRG still. Man advantage pushing in towards the garage. Banny leads the way, Sticky's out. And AG are continuing to back off of this. They don't have the numbers to contest mid, and especially uh, not without their scout roamer combo. That's the same thing, really. Like, how far do they need to drop back on Batlands the last round, if you can recall that for back the sixth round on Batlands? It was really just a problem. They didn't drop all the way back this time ago. They've learned from their mistakes. It's going to be Stalemate City, ladies and gentlemen. All 12 members are alive. Both of these teams do have the quick fix. Obviously, they can get that spurst of health. You're straight coming in for a couple of seconds, but yeah. it's not going to be enough if the enemy team can basically do the exact same thing. So both of the teams, they're going to wait. They're going to wait. They're going to wait mm -hmm. some more. Mm -hmm. One pick can change everything, though. Now, usually you would be watching Tagarung for some sort of bomb, but you might actually watch Lansky here, who might go into jump in and maybe even out the quick fixes. Um, but... Lansky's been doing that on Badlands a little bit, where he kind of just walks around, tries to just be very aggressive. Just Tiger's gonna go for that bomb. Yeah, there you go. Tiger, on that right side, he's trying to make play onto the soldier, and Lansky with a little bit of spam helps take down Rando, so still 5 on 5. It's Lansky technically now... they have a shotgun advantage, like if you think about it, they have a shotgun advantage. HG's gonna play onto that one. They find the scout here onto the side. Kapow gets taken down, did not drop back out early enough. Now it's a 5 versus 4. Obviously, spawn advantage for Rando. He's going to be there a lot faster than Tagarog is. He's actually still down. So, HRG, yes, they're pushing into this one. This might be a little bit of a death trap, though. Boink gets taken down by the Stickies of Bani once again, though. It looks like HRG is going to sit on top of this side. Indust has popped that quick fix off. I'm actually going to be able to pick up this second point. No problem whatsoever. Kapow running that rifle now. And Squid is going to run the heavy weapons guy. Try and hold off that quick fix pressure. I love how at the very tail end of that, they knew that Indust had a quick fix advantage. And they just jump shade up on top of the high ground. And there's really nothing AG can do about it at that point. But, uh, it looks like HRG just, you know, they have themselves a little bit of an advantage here. Again, this is their game to lose now. And once they go up in rounds, it's really hard to take that back. You see HRG now just gonna even it out. Let the game chop. They're on the fourth point. It's gonna be hard for AG to do anything to make it out of here now that they're on sniper heavy. And that's AG for the play. It looks it's like... I'm expecting some sort of massive suicide. Yeah. Like, Tiger Run goes first. I would not be surprised. There you go. Stronger goes as well. Sizer doesn't, but Sizer might actually just go and sit at the resub side. Uh, looks oh, like boink. the pressure comes out. Yeah, the force. Wow, it's actually a force. Well played to Boink actually there. A the squid comes in from the top left side on the heavy weapons guy, drops down. He is in a little bit of a dangerous position. In this really he's gonna have to make his way towards his buddy. 100 HP gets taken down. That's not very well played by AG. But it looks like they're gonna be able to pick off the second point, but after that, hell's gonna break loose, ladies and gentlemen. Don't walk into sticky. You heard Black say it during that sort of um, mid-game segment that we have, the analysis desk over. He said they keep walking into stickies. 
Danny really is going to be the guy to watch. Kapow, a little bit of a duel here on the side. It's Tagaran, 36 HP, makes his way towards the map, but gets shot down though by Boink. He came from that top hand side. Six versus five, and HRG with the quick fix now ready to rock and roll. Both of these teams are probably going to be able to fight it out here in Granary Yard. I love that little gap there by Danny. Going to slow down that quick fix push, and both quick fix have been popped at this point. Six on five, Nancy takes down Rando high in the sky, and uh, now it's five on five. Lansky trying to pick out a point on that right side. Guys are going to help finish that one off. HRG with that man advantage pushing away towards second point. Kapow from behind takes down Shrugger. It's what actually it a not too bad exchange for either team. HRG is going to be able to pick this one up though. They have a slight advance here to work with. Are they going to rush last? It looks like yes, they're very, very tempting. Banny, Soldier as well as probably Mr. Lansky. Together with Banny and Shade, they're poking on towards this left hand side. Decide not to though. And ladies and gentlemen, we have a stalemate once again. Kapow is going to spawn heavy. Calling it. No, he's not. Damn it. Now he's spawning. Wait, what? <laughs> they actually switch it up. Kapow is now sniper. Is now sniper. Squid is heavy. So they switch the two around. Um, it's probably the reason why he didn't spawn heavy weapons, guys, because he's now sniping. Um, in general, though, setup is the exact same thing. Squid is going to say in the position that Kapow was, and Kapow is going to do exactly what Squid did. They just hope to do each other better, basically. That was pretty aggressive, though, on this left side door at last. I mean, he's just creeping up on that fence, opens the door, almost gets an angle on the shade, but no, can't find that. Shade's just a little bit too sneaky. Lansky uh, gonna die to a sweater trap. Squid picks up a kill on a shrugger there as well. And again, that's a two man sacrifice that HRG yeah. just pulled two seconds ago. So, AG uh, were successfully able to push out last time, but let's see how this goes again on the second track. It's like the one thing that's changed though is that Sizer is running that heavy weapons guy. So, there's 375 pounds of Russian steel sitting on towards that point. And the question is, yeah, again, they're gonna break that heavy again from AG. They don't wow. push the heavy with the combo, they push it on the flank. And it's the second time around that it just doesn't work. Last time Kapow went down, now Squid goes down, and look, there's six blue members rushing their way onto last year against only three reds. Oh, and now Shade pops, pops his quick fix second. Be rolling in, there's really nothing AG can do to stop this point from going down. And Shade stepping on the point, putting cap time there. Shrugger picks off Sweater. Kapow goes down here as well, and HRG picks up the ground, and that's exactly HRG's game. They just do a sacrifice and make it AG's turn to mess up. Yeah, this, the, the, the sacrifice onto last is probably going to be the standard which we're going to see throughout the entire weekend. How do you break something that directly counters you? Well, you take it out of the equation first. Um, and that is basically what HG has been doing. Now, first round, obviously, 1-0 to nil right now on the board. Four High Rollers Gaming against Apocalypse Gaming here in the second map of the first uh, first game, basically, of the mm -hmm. ACA Season 14 LAN. And we see Banny unbelievably fast and towards this middle. And I guess that is a pause once again. Um... Not really sure what's going on exactly. Last time Banny crashed, I'm guessing maybe the exact same thing is happening right now. Uh, that'd be a bit unfortunate. And Banny, wow, quick this time to mid on the high ground on top of those crates. So and fast. I think Sweater might have been the one to crash this time because he's still hanging yeah, out did. in the yard. Yeah, so, he crashed. Uh, uh, yeah, I guess maybe that makes it even, doesn't it? I guess that I guess because he's hanging, does it mean there's like no 90 second delay? I actually wasn't aware uh, of that. It's not, he's not hanging there, he's hanging 90 seconds in the future. Oh, yeah, obviously, but. Okay, well, fine. Doesn't so, matter. No, there is a 90 second delay, basically. That's what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the unpause there to get players back in the server, and hopefully this will go out smoother than last time. Last time the STV went down completely. This time we're okay. But let's talk a bit about that last round there. Uh, HRG on the fourth point. Oh, and I guess not. And as we're unpaused here, like Shade's gonna bomb in pretty quickly, and without Sweater, there's really nothing AG can do to stop mid from going down. Bandy picks up that kill on Kapow. And that puts AG essentially two players down, so HRG can continue rolling this through the yard. Sizer leading the way for his team. Good damage onto Kapow there. Or not, not Kapow, uh, Squitter. Just and gonna pop that quick fix off. Tag, that tag goes down, Squit goes down, Sweater goes down. That means there's an advantageous exchange for HRG. I'm actually sitting in the back of AG at the moment. I know Libs, that door is bugged. There's nothing we can do about that. Next pause coming in. It looks like maybe Sweater is having some LAN lags. I have no idea how that one works out, but I guess there's an issue with either the computer or something going on at the LAN at the moment, guys. There's nothing we can do about it. All we can do is just wait for the game to keep on going. And AG, I mean, they are in a weird position, but it's not like they're they're very bad in this exchange. If you look at this, both Lansky and Rando, around 170, 180 HP. So one rocket is probably going to make a difference. Both medics are sitting there with about the same percentage, same health, stuff like that. Um, uh -huh. But I, the I weird part about it is that yeah. uh, the, the combo for AG trapped behind. Uh, so HRG mm. made it behind them to capture the point. And now AG are in a really awkward position where they can't really get their combo out past Lansky uh, without some sort of exchange there. 
And I, with the spawners from AG a little bit slow, they're not going to make it in time. Sizer, you see him in the stairs, uh, so he'll be able to drop down soon and help his team out. And uh, make it the Sizer and Kapow maybe. are probably going to find each other because Kapow just came running out of spawn. You can see yeah. him sitting into that uh, first or second yard. Uh, so Sizer and Kapow are going to find each other. Then the one sort of the question mark is Boink. He's sitting into the forward yard, basically, on towards that second point on his way towards middle when he realizes everything is behind him. He's going to jump back and it's going to provide the extra firepower. I think AG's actually going to come out winning out of this exchange. The question is, how big? Um, because if they only get like a one-man advantage or something like that, but if they kill everything, they can turn this round around. They can make their way towards middle. They can make their way towards second. Just get the advantage they need. Get a point on the board. It all depends on how this exchange is going to go. It's actually a nice moment to pause because this is going to be an absolutely crucial exchange. Yeah. So it looks like uh, I'm getting word from Killing that they had to restart. I guess Sweater's game was lagging, so he's going to restart his computer. Yeah. That's, um, this that's reminds me of that this giggly guy video where he's like preparing to aim on the person when the pause comes off. He's like practicing <laughs> the movement with his mouth. Oh, God. I can... Seriously, if I would do that, I would just mess it up. I'd just even be more pissed off at myself. Like, I, I really... Oh, God, I cannot, I cannot imagine doing that. And then missing, right? You'll, you'll hate yourself <laughs> for the rest of your life if you even miss. There you go, unpause happening really quick. Um, Boink was saying still lagging, so that's kind of why the pause actually came in right there. Unpause happened very quick. Sweaters rejoined. Obviously, he's not needed for this fight because he was already dead. So the the outcome of this fight is unrelated to whether or not Sweater crashed or not. He did. It's not going to matter. This fight is going to be absolutely crucial. The unpause is going to happen any second now. Obviously, Sweater, he rebooted his PC. Takes a little bit longer to get in. But as soon as he does, this fight is going to be crucial, Slyn. I'm expecting AG to come out. The question is, how is HRG going to be able to deal with that straight off to that? Yeah, we'll see. Lansky is pretty hurt here, and uh, yeah, you're right. Banny is so far away from the side, he's not going to make it there in time, and even if he did, he's pretty hurt himself. The pause comes off. Nope. Scores 1-0, uh, HRG in the lead over AG in this second map. Grain Ray Sizer fighting off Rando, as we mentioned, and Rando is able to take him down, so AG, you're right, are coming out on top. Rando, uh, mm -hmm. with decent health on that second point there, and AG are going to get this capture back. Sweater makes it up in time. It's only a little, though. I, I like what HRG did there. They decided to just run. As soon as they realized both Kapow and Boink were right there, they decided to run. They, oh, shit, maybe a little bit cut off. No, it's okay. It's okay. Don't worry. No panic. Alarm buttons can go back off again. Both of these teams probably have that uh, quick fix running about now. Yeah, you have to manually check, obviously, because the HUD is broken. Both of these teams have the quick fix ready. Uh, still in City again, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to hear that uh, a lot of the times during this weekend. But it's something that just belongs to the current North America meta game. They're gonna gonna try and look for a pick. Remember last time. It's like Tag time, is gonna bomb. Yeah, he's, he's last at time Tag right. bombed. There we go. He's at 250 on that right side. He goes for it. Scouts right there to beat wow. him. But, oh wow! Great pick on the sweater. Nice job there by Tagro. So now that's gonna trigger the push of HRG. Quick fix is gonna get forced for Indust and Shade as well. And without their double man, AG are gonna back off of the yard and probably hand it around. HRG here for that yeah, second point. Yeah, definitely. That Tiger and Bunk, absolutely crucial. There's a soldier hiding up top, though. Lansky has found him. He's going to try just get that duo out of him. He's going to drop down to the bottom. Let's see if Boy can manage to pick up something there. He gets one kill on the size of it. It's only the return frag after he went down himself. So that's a little bit of an okay exchange. But HRG just going to be building off this quick fix. They did not kill in Dust, so the quick beat percentages are the same. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, heavy weapons guy Sniper is probably going to come up as soon as... Um, as soon as blah, 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 who ended up dying there? Uh, Sizer. Kapow. 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 Oh, Sizer's oh yeah, Boink died, obviously. As soon as Boink died, obviously. He's going to come back. Probably going to see. I, no heavy weapons guy just yet. Sniper is in play, though, for AG here. Yeah, another Tagro, or sorry, Lansky bomb this time. That's actually going to work. He forced uh, Indust on last. Shrugger going to die soon after, but it doesn't really matter now. The damage has been done. Shade's still going to have his quick fix on second point. Sizer on heavy. Yeah. AG, pay attention! Tag is sitting on last! There you go! They finally found him! Gonna drop all the way back and Tag's gonna try and do something. I had no idea he was there, just sitting in the back. <laughs> yeah, there's so uh, much action going on for HRG in the, in the movement there. and Yeah, he was able to sneak through. HRG are considering his push now on that right side, clearing this trap out. And uh, now here comes that quick fix from Shade. That's gonna jump his medic in. I don't this think it's gonna work. Developed. 
Like, it, it's a long way that they need to make, and obviously Tagrang, he wasn't there. Now they're gonna come in. A counter quick fix, wow, the Banny Pipe actually hitting there on Tarando. He goes down, Squid cleans up though. The janitor comes in, picks up a double. Can he pick up the triple as Kapow comes and helps Buddy out? There we go, the kills are going into AG's favor, but basically, this is an HRG suicide. You see one soldier to last, Tagro cannot make this one happen. And only Shade and Banny are the players left alive right now for HRG. Scyther is spawning, and Lansky and Shrugger are coming back onto the, the board in about three seconds. But the fight here on second point breaks out. Banny versus Swit are basically happening right now. It looks like AG not feeling comfortable here, gonna drop back, gonna crawl into their safe hole at the moment. Mm -hmm. Gonna try and play from there. Yeah, this is one of the first big mistakes we've seen from HRG. That push there came a little bit too slow after Tiger Young died. Uh, but still, they're able to recover off of it. Now the quick fix has popped on the last. Lansky leading the way down the deep left towards the point. Shade getting on it, putting decent capture time. Meanwhile, Bandy goes down from behind. Rando's gonna pick him off there and get Lansky as well. Scout's in trouble. Sizer down to 75 HP and Shrugger trying to do some work. Gets finished off by Kapow, who gets another one on the oh. Tiger Young. G able to hold off on this last point here. Shade sneaks out alive. Yeah, Sneak and Shade is basically the only medic alive on the board right now. It's in there's still seven seconds onto the dose, onto those death spawners still. And the Shade is gonna be able to, to just build this one up to get away his buddy Banny. AG, they kind of wanna take something out of this one, but it doesn't look like they're gonna be able to do it. And really the only thing that is probably gonna be able to stop HRG from just rushing in is either a suicide, which Rando just did and was unsuccessful, or a heavy weapons guy sniper. And HRG, they're not gonna wait for that. They just wanna go six versus five. They're pressuring from this left and side into last, and I don't think anything is going to be able to stop them right now, Slim. Yeah, and HRG going to make it 2-0 here. Uh, again, getting out to an early lead, just like on Badlands. Uh, if you guys missed the first map, it was 5-1 on Badlands. HRG took the lead there, and this best of three. And looks like they have a good start here on the second half as well, Pledge. Yeah, that 3-0 on Badlands was really fast, though. And obviously, Granny, it's a little bit of a slower map. We've been seeing this. A lot of stalemates. Obviously, the two crashes didn't help. Uh, but in general, Granary a little bit of a slower map. Two nils on the board though. The AG, if they want to have some sort of hope of making this one happen, they should win this middle, they should win this round, they should get stuff done about now. And as both of these teams rush towards this middle, HRG, they're going into the back. They're just completely ignoring everything that says in the Team First 2 rulebook that you're supposed to do something there. Ignore everything, and here we go, they're going to try and make the plays. Banny gets one, Sizer picks up one, and as Sizer and Shrugger are absolutely mental, Squid and Boyd goes down. Really, the follow-up frags are right now going to happen. Shrugger once again picks one up, and as Lansky finish off the remaining players from AG, actually Sizer coming in as well picks one up. HRG is doing ridiculous stuff, but it's working out in their favor. They're going to be looking to put the 3 on the board here in just a couple of seconds. Yeah, they did a great job of playing together and forcing the quick fix from Indus first. And then Shade's quick fix came in better, so now like they're trying to get the last sweater with the Sneakies takes down Sizer early on. Still 5 on 5, but Randall's going to spawn up soon. And actually Tagrung is still at the forward spawn, so it's sort of a 6 on 4 situation where AG could get their way in. And wow, Kapow hits a huge headshot on the Vanny on second point. And that's going to trigger a push from AG. Uh, they're they're going to push, but I think this push is mainly just designed to get that uh, quick fix out of the way. That's what they're going to do. And actually, Strucker just goes down. And even though that quick fix was popped off, the healing, obviously, it's not invulnerable, right? You're mm -hmm. still being healed. They actually broke that healing because they focused fire properly. And now, with the quick fix in the hands of Indust, AG's going to try and break this one through. Remember, the score is 2 0 at the moment. But if they can make this 2 to 1, anything can still happen. Tagaron on the flank at the moment. He is doing some work. The players of AG have to go back for him. And it is a 5 versus 6 still. And as Tagaron is probably going to go to any second now, it is a 5 versus 5. Lansky feeling the pressure, though. He's like, you know what? I'm going to have a little bit of a poke. That scout really should go down. He is overextending. I don't know who that is. He's probably going to get taken down. Might be able to pick off Squid in the quick process. Not going to be able to do it. Here comes the quick fix, though. Pressure comes down, and as Banny as Sizer go down, it's a good exchange for AG Slim. Yeah, HRG are coming back in though. But, oh yeah, it looks like Squitter's picking up two kills on the Sugar and Lansky. And AG come out on top, they get that capture point, and now they're pushing in towards second already. Shade and Tag, the only ones alive, they're gonna have to back off here. It's a four on two. The AG are just streaming their way in towards second right now, gonna get this capture down for free. They kind of need to take Shade out of the equation. He is still building off that quick fix. So obviously pushing last, not going to be the easiest thing in the world, but AG think very, very heavily right now. They might decide to rush this as they do already have that quick fix fully buffed. Let's see, left side, right side, top side. What do they decide to do? Looks like what they decide to do is sit on towards the second point. Just wait for the players to be there. And now the big question is, are they going to walk in towards those baddie sticks? They spotted them. They know they're there. But Boyk is still going to catch pipes all day long. Yeah, and now with this, 
man advantage. HRG have the potential to get out of last. And it looks like Shade and Landscape are exploring the top areas of that pipe, but uh, uh, this is a pretty conservative HRG. You know, just gonna chill back on last, allow AG to go for some sort of bigger, riskier sacrifice or a bigger play. Yeah, um, obviously you can see HRG, they're not very often in defensive positions, but when they are, they do the exact same thing as AG was doing. So this just seems the standard thing to teams running crit screen is doing this. Now the question is, is AG gonna respond the same way? Are they going to suicide players in, or are they going to play the pick comp? And that's, that looks what they're doing at the moment. Kapow running that sniper rifle, he's going to poke up that top hand side. There's a soldier there spamming. Kapow has already felt his rock at 63 HP onto Kapow. He cannot go down, kind of needs to get buffed. You can see, is he going to go from the top? It, it really looks like they're just playing the pick at the moment, AG. It's a different approach than what HRG was doing. Not necessarily wrong, that still has to be proven, obviously. And as Kapow gets the buff right now, he's going to poke on towards his right hand side, sees the soldier. Gets that body shot, not landed. Now goes towards this left hand side, another soldier, sniper there, not gonna get the shot just yet, he's gonna poke, he's gonna miss, he's mm. taken down. The HRG, they're it's just gonna be able to hold on for the time being. It's tough the way AG are doing it, they're just allowing Kapow to do the solo individual play, and they're not really putting anyone else in there to help him out. Uh, and uh, it's tough to make an individual play when, you know, all of HRG just sitting out there, and uh, it looks like he's trying to defend the top side. But HRG are just gonna allow AG to continue on to just... Sacrificing a player, maybe. Uh, looks like they're gonna go for a heavy play instead, so Boink switching over to heavy. A bit like what we saw from HRG earlier, so maybe a sacrifice play coming in soon. Yeah, AG, we saw this on balance as well. They picked off a round off this. They played the exact same, and they won that round. They don't want to risk it. I think that is the main thing. Right? It's land, it's the biggest thing. If I was just gonna go down again, it's fine. No one's gonna mind. Because HRG, they can push this, but if they do, they're gonna be in a disadvantageous position. That's what they're they're looking a little bit. They're spamming with some rockets from that right hand side. Not be able to land all that much of that though. And Sizer are still gonna snipe. And it looks like Squid and Kapow still both sitting on scout. No off classes, no spies, nothing of the sort. It looks like AG, they're waiting. They're waiting, they're waiting and very patiently. And it looks are they gonna switch mediguns? Yes. I love it. I love it. I love it. That's a quick crit screen right now. <coughs> I don't Interesting. think if you're HRG, I'm not sure if you're expecting this. I mean, uh, you might be expecting a spy play sometime to get into position. Actually, Kapow is on Spiral. He's running a Dead Ringer. I'm not quite sure if Dead Ringer is the right choice for this last, but uh, you've know, taken this long, so AG, uh, HRG, sorry, might be expecting this spy play. Even it's just it's taking so long to get that to work. Uh, Tag's gonna take Kapow down, who was walking in backwards, and Kapow's thinking, "Oh God, I don't have tar charge time to get anywhere important, so I'm just gonna back off of this." But he's bought enough time for Indus to get this crit screen, so if you look at yeah. towards Sweater, uh, see if Sweater's gonna maybe make the crit play towards last, but you gotta be careful about Sizer on Sniper. Yeah, they have the crit screen though, they have crit screen spy play. Let's see how that one is gonna pan out here for AG. So it looks like, yeah, they're gonna go demo from the top and then spy from behind. It looks like Kapow's already been spotted. It's dead ringer, nobody minds. Kapow's just gonna walk back in. Uh, I don't really know if I like the Dead Ringer um, in that scenario, but he decided to go for it, it's fine. Let's trust Kapow, ladies and gentlemen. The crit screen is going to happen from the top any second now. And HRG, I'm not sure if they know. I'm really not sure if they know. They might expect it though. Kapow going down again. He's going to respawn again. And there he goes. He's going to try and make some play up. It's not going to happen. He's probably going to switch it over to Sniper yeah. or something like that, and then that's when the crit screen is probably going to come in. He's probably going to come in on Scout, I'm guessing, because with this Krieg, they want to you know, make sure they have enough fragging classes in. Uh, to help it out, and uh, that's the thing. If you run a snipe with the crits Krieg, you're you're missing out on one of those fragging classes here. So mm. we're literally just waiting. Time. Ag are taking this very slowly, there very methodically. Here, here we here we go, Slim. Now it's time. Now it's time. I'm expecting a Delman heavy crits Krieg from top. That's what I'm expecting. It doesn't. It, like again, they put the heavy on the flank. They're gonna let the soldier suicide first. Crits Krieg follow up most likely. Are they really suiciding players in? They are. I. I'm confused about what AG is doing. Maybe. They got the counter in play. They got well, it. They, they HRG pushes the in screen. here. Maybe this crit screen will come in and and get them. What about the laser beams oh, around the corner? It might be like the reverse psychology. Yeah, here's oh, the, here laser comes beam. the crit screen. Surprise! There you go. They're gonna try and make something happen, and nothing just happened so far. But obviously, right now, AG knows. HRG knows. Everyone knows. But there's a crit screen in play for Indus right exactly. here. They couldn't get anything done because the heavy obviously only deals as much damage as the quick fix heals. So you need a Delman to insta kill that. The crit screen, it didn't do anything just yet, but both of these teams, they're building as fast as they can. And HRG, they're going to be a little bit shaky right now. They might actually want to push off of this. I would not be surprised to put some pressure. Got to come from that left hand side. Tagger goes down. 
Obviously, Kapow went down on the other side as well, so it's not going to matter all that much. 90% on the shade at the moment. That quick fix is ready to rock and roll, but in does he has that crit screen almost ready. And that's where fireworks are going to happen here on last. Well, I think that, you know, we are talking earlier about Heavy being the counter for a quick fix. A crit screen Heavy isn't really the same because you can't really yeah. chase players down. You so need a demo I might have, soldier. you know, I'd rather, rather seen that crit screen happen on top. the demo. Here they come from top, uh, guys. This is what we're looking for. Crit then put it on Sweater! In dust! What are you doing? <laughs> Sweater was like, give me, give me, give me the crit. And he just... Sweater was like, okay, I guess I'm not getting that crit screen. And it looks like AG. Okay, a little bit of miscommunication. It's back off, two up. Just play it simple. I just, I don't know what that was, but. <laughs> that was and I'm just... not sure what, if what we're seeing is sort of like the inexperience of AG. I mean, yeah. there's some land jitters, but they really show, like, you know, watch HG push last. They have a game plan there. They're gonna do a three man sack. They're gonna do some sort of, you know, switch on the metagun or whatever it is. Okay. But here we're try seeing to. sort of like an indecision from AG. Try to. Here we go. They're gonna try and do the exact same thing. Come from that top hand side. There's a soldier there, Delman there. Crit again, no crit stickies. So Indus is gonna pop that one off though, and they die. Uh, and HRG is gonna have no problems whatsoever. I think they walked into stickies and snipers and pretty much everything that was dangerous. And it looks like so far, actually AG just holding them at least in the back for the time being. That is very well played by Rando. Jumping that last point for a sole purpose, making the enemy drop back, getting those spawners in. And AG, this is where HRG won their rounds, Slim. But instead, they need to block that point. Like, that's the most important thing. They kind of need to block that point. They do get the forward spawns, though. And here we go. AG's going to try and pull an HRG by winning on second point. Yeah. But they're getting a nice pick on the Banny on the right side of two. And with that Banny pick, no demo man for HRG. AG have the all clear to go. Yeah, okay. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Actually, AG coming in from the right hand side. The script is almost ready as well. Here we go, Slip. Yeah, and uh, Tag and Lansky both going down. Half time on the point for AG. Quick fix pop, but it's not going to be enough there. As you saw, quick fix doesn't make you invulnerable. Uh, so wow, that took, that took so many chances. Okay, uh, so AG there's... finally executing. And, uh... This is what we learned. If you want to win Granary Last in a quick, quick fix meta, what you need to do is lose and then kill them on second point. That's how you win, because it's been happening three times right now, right? You suicide players in, enemy team pushes, you kill them, and then go. Two to one is on the board, HRG still ahead, but that was a cracker of a round, something that went all over the place. And this middle's gonna decide a lot about the future of this game. Yeah, uh, Shade jumping up on the high ground there, but nice pipes coming from Sweater takes him down. Meanwhile, Boyk and Kapow picking up frags for AG. This looks pretty good for now, Lansky is uh, Boyk cornered, but... AG still have the number advantage there. Shrugger gonna get caught out, and it's only Lansky alive with 30 health out in the yard. He's running away with that quick fix out, but uh, looks like Squitter is on his tail. Dude, they're gonna see the one on one on two. Lansky. 16 HP. Away. Oh, yeah. there's no scout chasing. I, I would have loved to see the pistol chase happening right there. It didn't happen. As uh, Lansky gets out of there, 16 HP, but the quick fix is ready. They know they're up against the size of heavy. They know, like. If they don't know, they'll hear the mini gun spitting here in just a little bit. The question is, is AG going to try and push? We will never know because there's a pause. No, there's not. Am I lagging? I Where's think the... it was a pause too, but maybe it's just is a the CV source lag. Lagging? Like it's stuttering for me at the moment. So I'm no, not it's stuttering for sure. everyone. No, it's stuttering for everyone. There, okay. especially on the stream, I'm watching it. Yeah, it's perfect. Uh, uh, I don't know what this is. So we can not see the <laughs> game uh, now. Maybe now it's paused. Because now it's actually, it, it's it's done stuttering, it just stopped now. <laughs> um, well, but anyway, in general, is, yeah, is, AG... is, is AG going to push with this quick, quick fix advantage against the heavy? Or are they going to just walk Indus into spawn again and switch to crit screen? That's my question. Yeah, um, well, I think that AG might go for it here. They have such a large advantage over Shade. They just did a great job on mid, getting frags, Shade's coming up late. And AG just got that second point down, so they should be pushing soon. Boink switching over to Heavy. It's going to take him a moment here to catch up to everyone. He's, you see him there close to the Z. Uh, but, you know, Sizer on Heavy as well on the other end, so it's interesting. I think AG should be able to just push in with the, with the uh, quick fix advantage, though. That health advantage and get some frags. Uh, it's the standard thing, guys. If you're playing at LAN, if there's internet issues, anything, it's, it's an entire event basically playing on the same internet. Sometimes there's source TV issues, sometimes there's internet issues, sometimes there's so many issues that uh, that come here. If you're going to watch I-49 next weekend, you'll see the exact same thing. That's just the way LAN works, guys. We're very sorry. There's nothing we can do about it. What we can do, though, is say that AG with their pick on Granary, actually did a good job because they're doing very, very much so better than they did on Badlands. They 
slowed down the round. They stopped HRG in their tracks. They said, you know what? This blue train is going on way too fast. Let's stop it by playing Granary. And then we're going to go in the exact same pace. We're just going to make sure we keep on trucking on with them. That's how they're going to do stuff. And so far, they're doing a fantastic job on Granary. 2-1 to one is the scoreline. Looking to make it 2-all here. And as soon as that 2-all two, two, uh, like is on the board, that's when this game gets interesting. Because who's going to take the edge at halftime? Yeah, that's a very good point, Pledge. Um, also, on the, on the point you are making earlier about us being on the same line connection, these players are not playing at home. They're not playing on their comfortable setups with the same things that they're used to. They're in a new environment. Maybe the table's at a different height. Maybe, you know, they're playing with the keyboard on their lap that they're not used to because they don't have enough space for their mouth. Stuff like that. Um, all these guys are in an unusual environment, especially for AG, who have five players who have never been to LAN before. H or G have done this uh, over and over again, but AG, uh, they're a little bit out of their element. So we were seeing earlier on the last push, a little bit of hesitation, a little bit of uh, maybe some jitters trying to get in towards last, but right here, here, this is the chance for them. They need to just take it, get into last, and you know secure themselves in the second round for this. We got, um, we got word from the event that Team Fortress 2 are not the only servers that broke. So there's just a lot of stuff that broke. Um, the only thing we can hope for, because this looks like a pause, so it looks like everything was just lagging, um, and it, there was no connection issues or something like that. Let's hope the game stays intact. I think that's very important. Um, Apocalypse Gaming cannot be happy if this game gets, like, if this round basically stops and they start at 2-1, right? Like, they cannot be happy if that is the case. Um, so let's just hope the game stays intact and we can keep on playing in just a few minutes here, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. One interesting thing to point out is during these pauses, that's when the players come together and make a strategy. This could be, you know, not necessarily a strategic pause, uh, not something they intended for, but they say, hey, look, how are we going to attack last? Where, what are we going to do? What are we going to put our forces towards? What's their respawn is like? Where is everybody positioned? How are we going to do this? Same thing on the other end for HRG. They're like, okay, well, we have, don't have an advantage here. You know, we know that they could be coming in at any moment. What doors are we going to cover? How much time do we need to buy for Shade to get this the quick fix up? And, um... It gives HRG a second to breathe when they might not have had one of their lives. And there we go, the impulse has happened. Let's see if AG is going to push straight away. Yes, they are. This quick fix push is going to happen. They have the advantage. Shade does not have it just yet, but obviously they lost Rando since a 5 versus 6. They might, they might, they might. Shade, does he have it yet? Shade does have it. And actually, wow, holy Christ. AG picking up those three kills basically out of nowhere. Looks like that's going to give them the round if they play this one properly. The Heavy is still alive, no problem whatsoever. Well played to Boink. Those three frags that came out of nowhere, very, very well played by AG. Two holes on the board, and now everyone's also the same. I don't even know how Shade had a quick fix. I was pretty sure that he, had, very he was only at 50%, but <laughs> yeah, he must have got that one up right away. So, uh, wow, despite having that quick fix though, you saw it, you're not invulnerable when you have it. You can still lose your players that you're healing. It's just an increased heal rate. It doesn't mean that you're you can't die. With. Good focus fire. Oh, sweater about it. Sweater about actually fighting it off on the side there. Neither of those players actually comes out with a lot of help. Now we can see Boyd being the first blood here. HRG picking that one up. Banny going down very much against focus. Sweater as well. This time gets the kill in and both the soldiers for HRG just doing work here, getting a frag each. Lansky is really going to be the guy to look to clean things up here. Him and his medic versus the enemy soldier and medic. Only there's a scout there. Shrugger have to ruin the party. Now Sizer comes in as well. There's a little bit of a scout duel going on, but with Kapow going down, HRG picks this one up. One thing that might be noteworthy is that there's only about three, three minutes, two and a half minutes left in the half. That means that if HRG doesn't cap this in time, it is going to be a two all. That is the way it is. They need to. There's, there's sort of a clock on HRG right. right now. They kind of need to try and make this one happen before the time is run out. Yeah, it's looking very good for them though. They took down Indus very late in the fight. Sizer is able to chase him out to the yard, take him down there, and that's going to give Shade a huge advantage. Plus, Indus is going to be up late. Boink pick goes down on the stairs, and now that's definitely trouble. HRG six on five, getting ready to point towards last. Tigrong just catching his way up towards second point. The second cap is going to go down. Lansky leading the already on that left side with this quick fix. Sniper out. I believe that's Kapow there. And, oh, oh great headshot on Lansky. <laughs> Meanwhile, pick has popped in. HRG still have a chance to finish this one out here. Five on five, getting in towards last. Trap. Nice job there by Sweater to take down Sizer. HG gonna pull off of this one. Someone check that goddamn PC. What the hell? How did he hit that shot? Very well played by Kapow right there. Showing his skill as Sniper Lamp proven, ladies and gentlemen, as AG holds that one off. They still have the quick fix ready in place, so they're probably just gonna run out. Like, I don't think AG is gonna push this. I can yeah, tell you that right now. Actually, they're... they have a sentry gun going up, so they're definitely yeah. not gonna push this. They're, they're not gonna do anything. They're just sitting on last, praying to God that time runs out as fast as they can, and they go into the second half with a 2 all score. That is gonna be the game plan for AG. And HRG, 
they're probably going to do the same thing. They're going to suicide in, spot the sentry, and try and make a play around that one. Can only assume there's still quick fix there on the shade. He does still have that. They're going to have to try and get that suicide play in. They send in a soldier, send in a second soldier. Both Lansky and Tagger go down. Struggle goes down. Three man suicide. Uh, I don't think anything this has is, happened. This is no not force, a good situation yeah. to have an engineer here because, you know, with the engineer heavy, it shows you're not planning to, planning to push out. Squitter might be swapping off here, deciding no, he's just going to re ambo up, and AG are not going to take advantage of the push because they realize mm. you can't take it to the enemy last in the two minutes. Yeah, but only with like a minute left or so. How many suicides do they really have? Like, let's be honest, it's not going to be a lot. And even if they get the force out, it is still going to be a quick fix, so there's still a, a, a very little amount of time actually to make stuff happen. It looks like HRG, they're gonna all in it. Right hand side, right now, with the heavy, with the demo. Gonna try and make this play happen. Quick pick gets popped off, they see the sentry, scout suicide comes in. Shrugger goes down, and whilst the teleport and dispenser go down, that is pretty much any, everything that goes down. And even though Sizer's very close towards the point right now, heavy is gonna go down. Sizer's still alive, now he gets taken down. And it looks like AG's gonna hold on for the time being. Time is gonna run out, Banny calls the go half. Is that HRG? The office were gonna run out, and it's too old, ladies and gentlemen, after 30 minutes of grammar. I didn't like that play. I didn't think that's a, a round winning play there. I think that was a very safe way to do it. They sent in their combo on the right side, who they didn't even fully commit. Meanwhile, their flank on the left side just sacrificed towards the point and died into that sentry. And uh, that wasn't a good shot for really. HRG. But let's, let's bring in our commentator, Blank, to give us a little bit more analysis here in the second, in the halftime. If he's hair, Please? if he's hair. Yeah, okay. I'm, here. Uh, I'm just not sure where to start. Well, this heavy, I kind of, I, I have like mixed reactions about it. I mean, you think about the quick fix, it's supposed to be about mobility, but like, when you look at the heavy class, it's just, it's kind of slow, you know? So like, some of these pushouts, you know, you'll have an uber advantage and then you try to push out with the heavy, but it's like, he's not there yet, and... I don't know, some of these pushes just look you know, pretty silly from both teams. But so far, the three-man suicides from HRG, they've been working out pretty well, but AG's finally starting to, you know, figure it out and finally able to put them at bay and whatnot. And AG on that one run, I think it took him like seven minutes to push last. I mean, I had time to go get some water and use the bathroom when I came back, and I'm like, dang, nothing's happened here. They but finally, the <laughs> finally, they went to the Crits Krieg, and I was like, okay. Well, I know, Pledge, you were, um, there was one part where you were saying, you know, Sweater wanted the crits up top, but the problem with critsing up top is it's just a little death box. Like, finally when they decided to crits up there, like, Sweater and Rando yeah. just kind of insta-died, because, you know, you're not even 300 and, like, 260, you're 220 or something, and, like, 250. I think two, so just... 220 or something is correct, yeah. Yeah, like, the only reason that even worked is, um, like, Sweater ended up getting two kills, I think, and that it was kind of, AG did the HRG thing, it was basically a suicide, but... Sweater stayed alive long enough to where he bought time for the respawns and then they came back in and they were able to fight off the point. So it's uh, it's kind of as you said, um, that these teams, how they're winning the last is by having the other team fit, fail to repush in the second. And I think yeah. part of that goes to how teams just hold in this game in general. A lot of teams, you know, you sit far back, you pull out a heavy, a sniper, an engineer, whatnot. You know, these are great turtling classes, but you're holding way far back from the doors, which just gives teams the space to come out and suicide on you, so... I mean, unless teams start holding close to the doors and contesting this, uh... I think we're just gonna keep seeing suicides as sort of the standard for the rest of the land. So, if you guys are just joining us here now, this is the coverage of the ESCA 14, uh... LAN playoffs, and it's the first match of the day, HRG versus AG. HRG are in the lead, they're winning 5-1 on Badlands, we're now on Granary, the score is 2-2, and it's a pretty close game, a must win for AG if they want to stay in the upper bracket. Blank, what would you do if you're AG? How do you get the win on this game and ensure that you win your map choice? Hmm, well, so far I think the mid-fights have relatively been in HRG's favor. Like, the way HRG likes to play mid-fights is they kind of ball up around, like, their combo and just play the heal beam. Um, one thing to know with the quick fix is because it's only a half buff, like really, if you're away from the medi beam, like you're just not gonna have health. So with HRG just kind of like playing together and focusing frags together, it really just sort of favors their playstyle. And I'd like to see AG kind of have a similar approach, really, in order to crack HRG at least at these mids. And in these like transitions, they need to kind of have a set plan. It's um. I know one of you pointed out, like, HRG, you know, if they're pushing last, they have a plan. It's like, okay, we're gonna do suicides here, you might come up off class, whatnot, if they get, you know, the pop or whatever, but AG, when they were pushing last, like, they just kind of looked indecisive. They're like, okay, guys, what do we want to do rather than, you know, someone calling the shots and saying, hey, here's the plan. 
So I'd like to see AG just kind of, like, come up with something before they actually get there, you know? Definitely agree with you. I, I think that they have a little bit of land jitters going on, and, uh, you know, this is the first experience really playing against, you know, one of the top teams in North America, uh, top teams in the world, even. Uh, uh, HRG being undefeated for two seasons in a row, and AG having so many inexperienced members. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how they play out the second half. Uh, but if HRG wins this, they're going to the be going on to the next round, and HRG will drop down to the lower bracket. Uh, again, if you guys are just joining us, this is a double elimination play uh, played live in Dallas, Texas. And uh, all these guys are playing for quite a big sum of money. $13,140. That's a lot of dollars. <laughs> basically, basically, it's six thousand dollars for first place, which is a thousand dollars a person if you win. That's a lot of dollars, guys. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know how else to say it um, for a, for a season of Team Fortress 2, which is basically a hobby for everything you like. That is a lot of dollars. All the monies. I think that is uh, the best way to describe it. Tyro was gaming, obviously. A 35 to 0 record in the past 35 games, right? Their win streak is absolutely phenomenal. AG's gonna try and do something about that, though, and so far they're doing an okay job onto Granary. Don't forget, even if AG wins this one, there's another map. It is a full best of three. HRG is gonna be able to pick a map after the veto system ends, and. I would not be surprised to see something very standard coming out of High Rollers Gaming then. Second half is going to start right now, though, ladies and gentlemen. I said, I said it already, two always the scoreline. AG right now in the blue up against High Rollers Gaming in the red. And AG obviously is Apocalypse Gaming. It's not Australian Gaming, which I've seen in chat a couple of times. They're American, guys, and two uh, Canadian players are in there as well. They're going to be going in towards the second half right now. Both of these teams making their way towards the middle. Quick fixes in hand. And plays are being ready to be made right here, Slip. <laughs> yeah, HRG going for Garage. Sweater was very aggressive on this first miss. So, so far across the point. Tagron's gonna try to push him off. Not really able to go. So much presence on the point here. Sugar getting a pick on the Rando. Squid going down is for AG and HRG looking pretty decent. A lot of cap time, but not gonna be enough here. Shrugger coming in from behind. Takes out Sweater. Kapow as well. Shrugger going huge on this first mid. And Dust pops his quick fix. Gonna have to bail out. Uh, with Boink, so HRG looking very strong on that first mid, playing tight together, getting this cap down, and Shade has a huge advantage heading towards second point. Yeah, Shade didn't have to pop that quick fix off, Indus did. Only 30% quick fix right now, they are going to be able to have the time to build this one off most likely, it's already on 50. Really, really fast, and the one thing I'm, I'm curious about is that Squid is actually not running that heavy weapons guy just yet. I don't know if he's sitting around spawn or something like that. There you go, he picks that is. one up. Um, it, it is very standard, but it's, it is the hard oh, counter shame, to though. everything, right? Like, th that's the way it is. You guys can all be saying, like, well, they always do the same. It works! You can say whatever you want, it works! At HRG, they're gonna do the same thing. They probably switched the crit screen. Yes, they did. They're just gonna take a page out of the AG playbook, doing a very good job onto that one. It's the thing, when is AG gonna be able to catch up on that? Yeah, there's really nothing they can do about this because Indus is, can't really switch off of crit, uh, Quick Fix. And Shay can just build up this crits here, and then you have Banny the crits on, which is just going to be unbelievable in a couple seconds. Hopefully. Let's see what's exactly <laughs> what's going to happen. 80% onto the crit screen at the moment for Shade. 85, 90. Let's see, how are they going to play that one out? They're going to go from side or they're going to go from top? It's a couple of options. The top, like Blank already said, it's sort of like a death box. I kind of like that. Uh, Expression and where is Baddy gonna go? Right hand side seems to be the way of choosing. They're both the players right hand side. Crit Shrink is about to hit. The question is, how hard is it gonna hit as it gets popped off? First Crit Stick, you fly across. It's the heavy, doesn't kill him though. And there you go to kill the sweater happens. It took a long time though. It's a two for two exchange. Heavy still alive, Medic still alive at the moment as well for Indust. And HRG not doing a fantastic job, but it's not like it's a bad exchange, that's for sure. Indust 5 HP still alive. Now gets taken down. Lansky jumps in there. And is Squid really gonna get taken down here? There there you go, finally made, manages to pull that one off, but it's the advantage that they were looking for, and Shade picking up the regular medigun for the first time on Granary, ladies and gentlemen. Fantastic choice from him. That was a huge round-saving counterbomb there by Boink to just hop in, take down Shade as that Crits Creek is going off, and Banny had only a couple of Crit Stickies there, I like a miss weapon swap for him, uh, prevented him from getting more Crit Stickies off to take down any players other than Sweater, so uh, looks decent for, HRG hold it, or for AG holding that first one off, but now in the second part, uh, Shade is switching over to Medi uh, Medigun, and that's going to be mm. a rent the plans for AG. I really like what Indust is doing. He's sort of counter-metagaming, he's saying, you know what, 
he either goes crits or medigun. Let me just run quick fix. 50% chance that I can do it right, and 50% chance that what just happened happens again. So let me just run that quick fix again. See if we can hold off that Uber. There you go. Uber charge gets popped off. 95% quick fix, and there you go. It gets popped off. And if you guys don't know, Uber's not very good against quick fix, as you can see right here. It's not that good, as AG completely waffle stomps everything that is red. Yeah, so difficult. I mean, even though Shade spawned sooner and was building the entire time, had such a large advantage, that quick fix builds so quickly, you don't have to build it at all. And they were able to get it in time to defend last, and HRG just melted away. AG, great job defending last. Gonna get themselves a second point, pushing their way towards mid. Uh, they're a little bit of numbered disadvantage for them, but they're gonna try and take over yard. Banny with a nice little cone shot takes down Kapow. And HRG getting another pick there on that right side. Sweater wow. going down. Twitter as well. That's gonna put AG3 down. The soldier in from behind, that's Randall, but Sizer's gonna be able to stop him. Boink on the point second. He goes down to Banny, and wow. HRG just capitalizing on the mistake of uh, the missed push by AG. Yeah, I, just, I, I think HRG just really focused fire and correct there. There's really no other way of saying that. They realized the mistakes that AG made, and HRG capitalized on it. 3 2 is on the board right now. Cyborgers Gaming, it's been a while, but they've been able to put a lead on the board once again. As AG right now trailing once again, gonna be going towards this middle with a plan, most likely. They've been winning a lot of middles over the past couple, basically. The past three or something, AG has definitely come out on top on towards those middles. They need to put that one out again. Three all needs to be on the board for them, because if the 4-2 comes out, I really do not think they have the time, the energy, and the mental state in order to come back from that one. Yep, Fanny going uh, catwalk. Actually, both games going catwalk in this first. There's a little bit of swell up, and dust pretty high in the sky. The tag goes down to Rando. Rando pulls out a shotgun, helps finish off Shrugger there. AG taking the number advantage lead. Banny in trouble on the right side, goes down to an AG looking so strong on these mid fights now. Great surf away by Indus to stay alive as the uh, quick fix comes off, and AG gets himself this next mid. It's the second time in a row that HRG decided to go up top with pretty much everyone, and it, I think AG realized it sooner and capitalized on it sooner this time around. I think that's basically what won them that middle point. Very well played to the boys in blue at the moment. They pick up towards that second point. Both of these teams, they still have quick fix, right? And AG realizes if we push in with this quick fix, we're probably gonna die. So we need to go and do something different. I would not be surprised to see Indus going towards that forward spawn after one or two people suicide. Yeah, well the score is 3-2 as you mentioned, Pledge. HRG are in the lead, and this is a must-win last push for AG. They need to make sure they execute correctly, and so they're just going to take their time, sort of get themselves, you know, the game plan that we were talking about, and then figure out a way to push last successfully. Even if it's unsuccessful, just have a plan that you're going to go with. Looks like Boink is going to go for a sacrifice play on that right side, goes straight into a heavy, he's going to get denied. Dress for a second thing on the Banny, the Banny hits an like, incredible pipe on him. And uh, that's gonna stop that for now. So nothing HRG can do to get out of this last hole. I'm so happy Boyd decided to jump that, else we would not have seen the Banny pipe in midair. I would not be surprised to see Indus going towards that spawn as soon as Boyd, uh, Boyd gets out of there. He's not gonna do it. Okay, they're gonna run a heavy of themselves. This worked last time. A couple of rounds ago, if you can remember that far back. They ran a heavy, and even though the exchange initially looked a little bit weird, they got three frags out of nowhere. I called that, but... I don't know if you can vaguely remember that, but that's the way it works. They went left side when they did that. Let's see if they're gonna try and do the exact same thing. They went heavy left hand side, threw all the heals on towards the soldier in the heavy, and tried to make it work on the flank. Let's see if they're gonna do the exact same thing this time around, or if they're gonna wait onto a pick from Kapow here, because a sniper obviously is not gonna help in that push. You kind of need either a scout or a pick advantage here if you're gonna run a sniper. Yeah, this is a really interesting quick fix versus quick fix. Sniper heavy versus sniper heavy battle. Sizer misses a shot onto the scout Twitter on that right side. He's looking into second point, but can't find an angle there. Tag opens the door for him. And uh, meanwhile, Kapow is missing shots on the upper. Sizer again taking pot shots on towards second point. Can't really find the pick, but Tagaro is able to kill wow. Rando and Kapow. Nice job, uh, Lansky there, helping out with that second pick. HRG, two up. Can they get in towards second here, Pledge? It was the two-man suicide, let's just put it that way. Like, and that was not a mistake. <laughs> let's just say it was. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it, it was just a two-man suicide. Quick fix got popped off right here. And you, you know how you win? You know how you win on ground? You kill the demo when they try and push towards your second point. Again, ladies and gentlemen, history repeats itself. The players get buffed up. Banny is down. Five seconds left on the death timers for him. It's going to be soldier area here on towards his left-hand side. Indus magically making his way through. 
They need to kill that heavy. They need to kill Shrug right now. There's a soldier behind them. That is going to be massive problem. In those needles right now, going to try and make something happen. That's not the way it's going to work out. Bandy's going to spawn. A heavy drops on towards the second point. And HRT turning it around. AG, in all honesty, they were too slow onto that one. Slip. Yeah, I mean, even with Bandy down, he's such a key player for HRG, but they did a great job of turning this around, and then Tagron from behind to kill the picks. Meanwhile, in the yard now, Shade has a huge quick fix advantage. Boink is going to go down to Lansky's shotgun, and here they come in towards mid now. Going to make their way towards mid, and HRG turning things around, ladies and gentlemen. 3 to 2 is the score, and HRG. <laughs> Luckily, that was a lag spike. I thought we had a pause on a lag spike on my screen. <laughs> uh, but we're just going to keep on going, ladies and gentlemen. 100% both of these medics. These Indus are quick fix. I don't know if you assume he is. There you go. Um, still, mate? Maybe. But I think Agent is going to try and play the game with the Tagger and Bomb again. This is tough for AG. I mean, you can't oh, let AG the back into this game. They're coming in towards that left guard. Lancey gonna lead the way through the Z. Sweater sticking up good. Kind of that bandy. Meanwhile, takes down Squid with a great fight. Lansky now gonna go for the Z push. Shotgun out to clear the trap, and then deciding otherwise. Still six on five. They need to get in here now. And looks like Lansky is trying to stamp his way in through that Z. Meanwhile, Sizer working his way through the They're stairs. So late. Like Slint, why are they waiting? Like it's six versus five. If you ever want to do this, do it now. But Squid is gonna spawn, and he's gonna go heavy. Like it's. Might as well, like you know the enemy is quick fix, you know they're about to push, might as well go heavy. Not sure how much I like it, but in all honesty, there's nothing wrong with time. it, that's for sure. And yeah, so he's, he's just he's... gonna make his way in. Yeah, HRG are taking such a long time, you're right, and Squitter came up his head, made his way through. I think HRG heard it. Uh, he's revved up here and ready to go. But yeah, now it's gonna make it extra difficult for HRG to get in. But the point uh, that I was trying to make earlier is that AG were in a position where they could have won the round, and they've given that up now. It's HRG's game to lose. Well, gee, it looks like they're, they're putting some pressure. You ran up going towards that Z side. I don't know how you guys call it in America. It's called Z in, uh, in Europe. Z uh, in Canada. Z, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you can see AG, they're, they're kind of looking. HRG, kind of looking, but we know HRG there in a 3 2 lead. Damage gets taken down. Lansky actually goes down. Well played, and now with a heavy. Yeah, he can move forward, but Squid kind of wishes he was scout right now. I can, now, I can tell you that one. Zindust and the rest of his team make their way towards the yard right now, trying to squeeze in with HRG, and here we go. There are stickies there. Rando goes down. Oh my god, Banny. Absolutely massive play coming out of that guy. And not gonna be able to pick up the point just yet though. Squid 300 HP. Kapow dueling players here. Right now we see point flying in. Can he get the damage done? He cannot. Shade with 60 HP or something. He is still alive. The frags are coming in here for HRG. And really, this higher world is game and managing to turn it around. So. This is just a slow death by AG. It's just gonna delay their spawn timers. They're not gonna be able to defend second point at all, and maybe not even last year. If HRG can get in last quick enough, there's still six seconds on the timer for Kapow and Squitter. This is trouble now. Banning leading the way in. Damage onto Sweater. Soldiers up in the air for AG, but they're getting so much trouble. Taking so much damage. Banning great pipe to take down Boink, and this is just gonna continue that mana advantage. Quick fix pop for Shade. They're in here now. It's Lansky taking down Sweater in towards the point. In does 32 health. Trying to get this quick fix, but not gonna get it in time. He goes down the Banny's trap on the point. HRG totally in on this now, fully committed. Sizer taking down Squid, Rando goes down soon after, and HRG make it 4-2. I like how they waited there until the quick was actually ready to rock and roll, and that's when they actually committed, right? That's when they all six just flew in and were like, well, we're not gonna die, it's not gonna happen. And HRG picks that one up, 4-2 on the board. Yeah, two, two all in half time after a 2-0 lead for HRG. Can AG do it again? Can they pull the combat? Can they make it happen against the top team in North America for the longest time? Hasn't lost since November 2012, and it doesn't look like there's going to be a loss on the board this time around. As AG once again hopping on towards that middle, they've been doing a good job so far. Can they do it again? Well, uh, Sizer taking some early damage here. He's fighting the sword on the left side. Rando in trouble. He goes down. Well, Sugar from the high ground, searching for a way to get in, but can't let Banny. Pressured by a scout on the right side, Garage. Quick fix, pop for AG, they're in now. Shade's quick fix coming off here, it takes down Squid. And HRG have such a large number advantage here, there's nothing that AG can do. But they're back in the ground, Lansky's gonna chase this kill. HRG gonna get that cap down behind, meanwhile Tag and Sizer trying to find their way towards second. They're gonna get this point for free too, likely. And this is just a runaway train now for HRG. Uh, let's see if Indust and the rest of the team can actually recuperate here quick enough. The bomb comes in as Tag tries to get the damage done. They're waiting again, you can see HRG, they're waiting. They're not actually pushing all the way in there. They need to get that second point first. It took a long time, they're gonna pick it up now. Again, we can see HRG and AG just in a sort of stalemate scenario here on towards this last on-site point. And either it was an HRG side or it was an AG side, it didn't matter. HRG once again 
They lost Tiger Rug probably on purpose. And ladies and gentlemen, there it is again, the crit screen. Yeah, he's switching over, and again, same thing. AG can't do anything about it. Stuck on last, but uh, let's talk a little bit about the mid fight. AG won the last two. And they weren't able to execute yeah. on that round. If they don't win mid on this round, I don't think they can get this round at all. 35% on the crit screen right now. It's going to take a while for that one to build. But I don't think AG, like, even if AG knows it's a crit screen right now, you kind of still don't really want to push into an enclosed space like that. I mean, there are options there, but they're not going to do it. It's an 80% onto the crit screen already. Last time, Bani went right hand side. If you guys can keep that in mind, AG completely crushed him, but then the counter bomb. Did a lot of damage onto AG, managing, uh, giving the win to HRG basically. Let's see if HRG is going to decide to do the same thing or if they're going to go from top hand side. Looks like they're just buffing left. their players at the moment. I'm going to go for lower left here. I think that gives them a lot of space to work with. Maybe get yeah. them out into that. The Looks like Lansky out, so. thinking about it. They're going to sacrifice a scout in towards last. Both scouts really? And here comes Tagarung high. Fake. And Dust going to surf that rocket. Oh, he has to pop his quick counter off. It's, it's just a fake suicide, like pretending like you have quick fix, right? Like, you don't, and now you're gonna kill them. That is basically the strategy. Here comes the quick crit screen. One kill, two kill, three kills for Lansky. As those rockets hit everything, and the triple comes out for Lansky. The frags come out, everything right now is going right for HRG. Even though Squid is doing a phenomenal job holding on for as long as he can, HRG is going to pick this one up. The GGs are being called. Most likely, Kapow picks up a double. Is he actually going to be able to pull this one off? No, he cannot. Point flies to the point. But Apocalypse Gaming is going to lose out to High Rollers Gaming in this first game here of the ESEA Season 14 Land Finals in Dallas, Texas. Fighting for a prize pool of $13,140. First place, $6,000. And AG not going to be off on a good start here, losing against the defending champions HRG in a game that can only be described as something where AG had options, but in the end were outplayed by the quality of High Rollers Gaming. Yeah, uh, HRG remaining undefeated this season. Big David Lansky Polanski going huge on uh, that second point there with the Crits Creek taking everybody out. Bandy to finish that one up and then just, just to clean up to finish out the match. And uh, really well played design play there as we were talking about. These design plays are so good for HRG. They just they have a game plan, they go with it, and it works. And uh, now HRG 5 1 on Badlands, 5 2 on Granary, and that's 2 overall. So they're going to move on to the next round. HG, as expected, going to drop down to the lower bracket. Yeah. And uh, yeah, looking at the stats here that Truck Truck has brought up for us. You saw that Lansky and Banny again at the top of the board, and Lansky's been having a stellar game. Yeah, Lansky uh, doing pretty damn fantastic over there already. Obviously, main caller, shot caller, I think. That's what I heard. I'm not sure. I'm European. Don't blame me. Um, but obviously, HRG, right? Like he's the core. He's the pocket soldier in, in North America. That's just the way it is. Doing a phenomenal job there throughout that game. And really, with those stats, so obviously, before we go over to some music, before we go prepare for Mix-Up versus Tryhards, which is obviously happening as soon as possible after this one, like... 20 minutes, 10 minutes, whatever, I don't really know. Obviously, we'll, we'll hear about that later. Let's head it on over to Blank first. He's sitting at the analysis desk, and he probably has an opinion on how the second half went. Well, that yeah. second half, AG did have quite a few opportunities on the push-out, but like, every time they were able to take two, they just couldn't convert in the middle, so... It seems like the key to beating HRG is just not to lose the middle point to them. Otherwise, it's pretty much impossible. Do, do you think that, like, on those middles specifically, do you think HRG played bad middles, or do you, do you just think AG actually did okay? Because they won the first two middles of the first of the second half, basically. Uh, well, I think AG is playing the mids pretty well, for the most part. It's just, sometimes mids can be rather random, and, I don't know, with the quick fix and how it was working out, just towards the end there, HRG was getting the better focus fire, just targets were dropping quicker, and it was just easier for them to sort of convert from then on. With regards to future games, is either Batlands or Granary gonna be scary? Like, is High Rollers game is High Rollers Gaming that good on these maps that it, it deserves a veto from any of the other teams? Uh well, I think Granary is actually one of a bit of their weaker maps. Like, AG definitely had a lot more opportunities it seemed on this map than they did on Badlands. Like, Badlands was a five one and this was a five two, which you know score wise they're relatively even, but. Um, in terms of just how the play was working out, this map was actually a lot closer. Like, 
the 5 2 doesn't okay. really do it justice. So I think uh, Granary, you know, we might see more of that in the future, but Badlands, uh, HRG seems pretty strong there. If you ask me, it was less about the mid fights. I mean, I think AG did well there, but more about AG failing to push last. I mean, they, you saw them having um, really long push strategies there, and sort of the thing where they kept failing over and over again, even allowing HRG to get back all the way from their last, all the way to the enemy team's last, and take the rounds. So. Uh, yeah, it might be one of their weaker maps, but I think that it was more on AG there, um, failing to push last. But, but uh, that's going to be it for us here on this second map. Uh, again, HRG take the lead in this first upper round uh, game, 2-0. to zero. Up next is going to be the number 2 seed Tryhards versus the number 3 seed Classic Mixup. That'll be a close one uh, for sure. And then the winner of that match will face HRG in the upper round. Thank you so much for joining us here. We're going to take a quick break. And then we'll come right back. So thank you so much.